If you want to know where the white devils are, Mr. Louis Farrakhan, I can tell you right now they run the Democratic Party 100%, and they've got black people in their web murdering your people, and they love it, and they think that people don't see them. Well, I see them, and I know who they are. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that Almighty God Allah revealed to him that the white race is a race of devils. And the only way, white folks, you can come out of this, because you cannot be reformed. You cannot reform a devil. All the prophets tried and failed. You have to kill the devil. Devil meaning wicked by nature. What more could a devil do than what has been done to the black man of America? Don't you send these children out here with the thought of murder in their mind. Oh, yes, I am. It's putting to death time today. You know how mommy said when it's time to sleep, you've been raising hell all day? Betty, bye-bye. Time to go bye-bye. Time to go to sleep. Well, it's time for the white man's mind to be put to eternal rest. Any human being who gives themselves over to the doing of evil could be considered a devil. It is the divine power of Almighty God, Allah, that is now bringing about the destruction of the United States of America. So if the federal government will not intercede in our affairs, then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. We want some of this earth because we'll tear this goddamn country up. Stop them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are feeling. Gentlemen, Mr. Farrakhan, we're going to interview Louis Farrakhan. Doesn't do a lot of interviews. We're flying out this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Sunday what time? Uh, about three o'clock. We're interviewing him on the fourth. I agree with a lot of stuff he says about Planned Parenthood, vaccines, uh, false flag terror. He's a very interesting guy. I want to talk to him about Malcolm X, you name it. I don't agree with, you know, white people can't be reformed and they're the devil. He hadn't said that in a long time. But I'm going to really see how much he's evolved or grown. And I'm really just seeking to open up a dialogue because somebody like Louis Farrakhan is so key when it comes to stopping the big foundations and the social engineers in this country and around the world to really start a race war or divide and conquer. I mean, nobody's winning with this war against Islam overseas that's just really causing a Sunni Shiite civil war. Uh, nobody's winning with the males versus the females and the whole feminist thing. I wanna hear what he thinks about political correctness and so much more because the last few years, I see Louis Farrakhan saying more and more things that I agree with, and then occasionally saying something that I disagree with. The Constitution warns that America must never let anyone set up a central bank. Right now, the President of the United States is given authority to assassinate American citizens. But I uh, want to go over some of this research that you guys have done, that their people have sent us uh, as well. And uh, hopefully we can uh, do an interview that's really deep uh, and that isn't just, you know, picked up by the tabloids with whatever zingers he throws in there. And, and, and certainly you're not going to avoid that. Uh, but I really kind of want to find the real Louis Farrakhan here. Lewis Walcott from Boston. Lewis Walcott, front and center. Hi, uh, Lewis. Fiddler, I, I see you. You're quite a fellow up there in Boston. It says here that you're a track runner at English High School and that you've equaled every record in school, right? Yes, and I hope to break some next year when I put on a little more weight. You do, huh? Yes. How about your violin? Can you play that as fast as you can run? Well, not quite, but I've got a lot to learn. I hope to break some records with this someday. You're just a champion at heart, aren't you? The system doesn't want this. 
us going out to interview this guy. We're supposed to be kept in our little electronic oh, yeah. ghettos. Yeah. We're supposed to be kept in our little reservations, our little plantations. That's what Google does now. It sends you news you agree with. We want to go actually try to work with people and talk to people and, 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 and humanize it because that's the last thing the globalists want. interviewed a lot of people, and I've snuck in places like Bohemian Grove. I've been attacked in political administrations, I've been arrested many times. But I gotta say, this is probably the most surreal drive I've ever made to go meet someone that I'm gonna be interviewing. Louis Farrakhan. I remember watching him on C-SPAN when I was really getting politically awake and aware. When I was like a sophomore in high school, and my mom would come in on the weekend when I'd be eating lunch, watching it in the kitchen, and she'd say, what are you doing watching Louis Farrakhan? The government for which you work is the number one enemy of the black man of America and the world. And here we are driving to their Phoenix headquarters. And look, it'd be easy to score a bunch of points and just be rude and make radical Islamic comments to him or whatever. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jones, for honoring us with your presence. We have watched you as you have watched us, and I have learned a lot from InfoWars and some of the wonderful things that you have done. We're two people interested in truth. We're two people that live in the greatest nation on this earth, but the nation is not now what it could be if truth unfettered would be given to the American people. And perhaps through this dialogue, that might happen. Well, I have to say, uh, thank you for having me in your home uh, and with your family. Driving over here, I talked about some of the reasons that I wanted to interview you. And then when I had a chance to be in your home right before the interview, you basically mirrored uh, what I had to say. So in your own words, I'd like you to really, for the TV viewing audience out there, um, go over some of the interesting things that you had to say to me uh, and to the audience, because uh, it just dovetailed exactly where I was going. And I have to say, I don't think I've ever had that happen before with an interview. Uh, so I'm really glad this is uh, happening here today, because as you know, there are forces that are trying to divide and conquer humanity. And we're really coming to a crossroads where people are being told to choose a side, but I don't think the sides they're telling us to choose are real sides. So I'm trying to get people to think outside the box. And when I spoke to you earlier, that was basically your main focus. So I think this interview is meant to happen for a reason. So thank you so much for giving us uh, the time and your busy schedule. Uh, so please just, uh, if, if you could recapture what you told me in there earlier, it was very interesting. In uh, the teachings, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his great teacher, Master Farad Muhammad, who came to enliven the black people in particular, he taught us that he never used color in this question and answer. He asked the question, who are the 85%? Who are the 10%? and who are the 5%. And in the answers that Mr. Muhammad gave that we study, 85% of the people don't understand the law of cause and effect. And wherever there is an effect that is real, 
the cause is just as real, though oftentimes the hidden hand that's manipulating and creating the effect and the circumstances that begin to divide and destroy. This kind of satanic mind is absolutely in control. And that satanic mind is hiding with a mask of humanity and civility, but now it is gradually being exposed. There are those at the top who guide and govern, who are not necessarily the friend of the masses of the people that they are governing. So it is the 5% are just a small group who know the truth, who understand the law of cause and effect, and they don't believe in a mystery God that's somewhere making things happen. If there's a real evil, then there's a real devil. If there's a real saint, then there's a real good person doing saintly things. So here we are. Now a conspiracy absolutely is in vogue. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. But I've asked certain people who say, well, you're a conspiracy theorist and they call you the same. I said, but do you read the scriptures of the Bible and Quran? Is not Satan real? Evil is real, so Satan is real. That really is a revolutionary thought that if you question the establishment, you question what they're saying when they're known liars, you're a conspiracy theorist. That's like saying you're a heretic. Okay, well, if we're a heretic against the system, I guess we're a heretic against the devil. Because this system, undoubtedly, you couldn't call it good. And from my research, that's my concern. The 5%, the 1%, the one-tenth of 1% that actually run and control and manipulate things, they believe they're going to end up winning. They believe that they're getting ahead of people by keeping folks dumbed down. But... Common sense shows, and, and just my gut tells me, you don't screw people over and then long-term get away with it. It comes back on you. And I think the people serving this system are some of the most deceived out there because they know how the world really works, but they've decided to basically try to screw over their fellow humans as if they're going to get ahead by doing that. I mean, just anybody who's God-fearing in their gut level has to know that's a lie. Well, Mr. Jones, in reality... There are those who go along to get along. They know what they're doing, but they do not know the vast evil that they are a part of. So the politicians today, I, I looked at the many Republicans and Democrats that are trying to win the nomination of their party. And it says to me, you know, it's like a, I don't want to be vulgar, but it's like you, in any major city, you see women undressed, showing their wares for a John.
to buy them. And it's like politicians who don't have money but have ideas. And they...